primary goal, of course, is to make payments um, uh, for our development purposes, trying to, uh, uh, to get the money to... Uh <laughs>
um, it is actually um, a company that utilizes the blockchain. That is basically all it is. And we're going to see a lot more companies like this coming out. And so when we um, saw Bitcoin and we looked to the future and we said, hmm, government is not going to let this thrive um, and become um, a go-to currency to be used in the real world. But we can see them taking the technology and creating their own. And I think that's what Ripple is more than anything. It is a cryptocurrency controlled by corporations and a cryptocurrency that is very centralized. And, um, and this is probably why their mindset is anti-cryptocurrency and anti-Bitcoin. Um, and so here's some, um, some highlights of the Ripple conference. And here is a review that I thought was very great um, from the first day. And today's the second day of the conference and I didn't get a chance to do a live stream because I had appointments today. But I am going to be doing, um, doing my research, um, watching those conferences and doing another update video like this one. Um, for each day of the conference. Here is the conference in someone else's word. The first panel was mainly held by executives from Airbnb and General Electric that they discussed innovations in digital assets and cross-border payments. There was a few tweets by Ripple of the main headline quotes that were um, that were mentioned during this panel. Uh, I'll read you some of them so you can get a little bit insight. The first one is, it's the first time in my banking career where data is the focus and blockchain is talked about. End quote by GE Capital. There is another one that states, uh, we're entering this new era where, where we are improving our capacity to track a payment through its entire journey. So the, this first panel was a little bit slow. Uh, a lot of people started getting upset because this wasn't what they were expecting to hear. They were expecting bigger news. Uh, I really wasn't surprised by this. I highly doubt they are going to throw out such big news in the first hour of a well-awaited conference. So in this in this first panel, um, we can see and we can listen to some feedback from the corporate side of things more than the, rather than the banking. Um, they focused more and they talked more about the ability to track payments made rather than the transaction speed. Where this, uh, I think it was one of the executives from Airbnb that this was a key factor, a really important matter in third world countries. So that definitely plays into the hands of Ripples as they can track the whole payment. So I'm, I'm going to touch a little bit on this on the third world country. Um, me, myself, having family there, I know the importance is more of the money actually arriving rather than the speed because there's a lot of issues with being able to track your transactions and a lot of transactions being lost in ledgers. So there, this is a key importance where Ripple can also provide the complete full tracking of the, the, the payment from when it goes out to when it arrives at the account holder's uh, account. Um, it's not about throwing out all these uh, announcements every time you get a chance in every single panel, throwing out huge announcements. It's, it's actually more of educating uh, the attendees on the products and the environment and logically a lot of networking in these events. And it's all also worth mentioning, it's not like we haven't heard uh, any great announcement uh, in the past weeks or months. We've been getting huge announcements. Remember, we opened offices in Singapore, in India. We also had the the 15, 30, 15, 30 billion dollar, the $15 billion uh, war chest, the incentive programs, the adoption of over 100 financial institutions, the Qualix uh, test run they're having, and also, like, like I said, one that came out uh, recently was the partnership with the Gates Foundation. As a matter of fact, Ripple CEO actually liked uh, a tweet that was, and I quote, so drop an announcement the first two hours. This is a professional conference, not a pump and dump scheme. Common sense, please. End quote. And I, I totally agree with this as well. Uh, like I've been saying, this is a three-day conference. Uh, we've been getting huge news. Um, people can't expect for bombs to be dropped in every single panel. 
On the other hand, on the second panel, we got a banker's perspective, uh, which a lot of people found interesting because there was a little more insight on the use of Ripple technology than the first panel. A lot of people felt like in the first panel, uh, they were kind of avoiding where instead here, uh, we saw on the second panel, the talk of Ripple and how it could be the solution to liquidity issues. We also, they also talked about as well, the big focus they have in Asian markets. And another concept they remarked was that the Ripple team actually goes around meeting with central banks and explaining what Ripple is and is not. And they stated that Ripple is not like Bitcoin with a different name, but a blockchain that is specifically tailored for banks. And tied to this, uh, regulators, unlike a lot of people think, um, are supportive of a technology that improves customer experience as long as they comply with regulations, which is something that is obviously has to be worked on. Also, an important factor is the security, stability, and integrity of the service provided. We got to get a lot of insight, uh, like I said before, from a banker's perspective and how they're they're actually working with regulators, uh, like I just stated, where a lot of people think, you know, it's never going to work because uh, they're going to regulate it, where Ripple actually supports regulation. And I'll get a little bit more into detail that further on because there's there's a mention of that in, in the third panel, which the title was The Real Deal with a Digital Assets. And it focused specifically, uh, like the title says, on digital assets. And there was a lot of talk of cryptocurrency, and especially the mention of ICOs and the importance of a regulated asset and how regulations are imminent. Ripple CEO uh, recently appeared on an article where as much in favor of the strict regulation on ICOs felt that it was important for them to mention the need for regulation of ICOs, especially I do touch a lot uh, on it in my channel where there's a lot of, of, of coins out there unregulated. I think one of the examples that one of the panelists gave was like it's it's like selling airline points or airline miles without actually having any airplanes. So I, I like that they touched on the need for regulation in the ICOs. And they also talked about the lack of efficiency in transfer of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, they said that the shuffling of digital assets between pools of liquidity for institutional use and funding transactions is only possible if the system is extremely efficient. It was commented that XRP is the only enterprise-grade stack for this use case. Maybe not for retail like Ethereum or Bitcoin, but for financial institution adoption. I know a lot of people were glad to have uh, that mentioned in this panel. And a lot of people were pretty sure that Patrick Griffin, the SVP of Business Development in Ripple, just confirmed that Veeam was using XRP. Then he went somewhere along the lines on about how Veeam will be outstanding in the market because they will be ahead for not needing to put any risk with currencies because they have XRP. Mind you, these are all interpretations, so until there's actually confirmation from Ripple, we can't be 100% sure, but there's a very good chance there is, and a lot of people are going crazy in the forums. They were also describing the fintech environment and where Ripple fits in. Now, this led to a lot of people feeling that the conference was a bit extensive and slow with not much major announcements being made. But I personally have to disagree on that. Now, before I conclude, I want to quote something which I found really interesting that actually helps describe why I disagree so much on people saying that the conference was slow and there was a major announcement. Um, this is by TB Crypto. I will leave his link, his Twitter link in the description. Definitely follow him for Ripple News. He is a great source. He said, and I quote, my personal thought is it really gives some insight to how new this is for banks, financial institutions and corporations how really the infancy stage is upon us. We take our knowledge for granted, and sometimes it makes us lose what reality is, end quote. Now, to conclude with my personal thoughts, the conference has to be well-paced, and it has to explain the technology and its vision well, even if at some points it does seem a little bit extensive and slow. Now, 
we have to understand that blockchain technology is still new and Ripple's concept has the potential to revolutionize a sector of the financial industry. But remember, it takes time. There was a lot of points laid out that to us it might seem basic, but it actually was very insightful to the attendees. Uh, to sum it up, I did enjoy today's panels, even though there was a lack of patience in the community.